So I've been spending some time trying to get Stripe subscriptions set up with my SaaS product, and I figured I would just kind of talk about how to get your application set up with Stripe and the approach that I'm taking. And by the way, leave a comment if there's something I'm doing in this video that you think is wrong. Well, let's just go ahead and jump into it. So I have a pricing section down here. And so on this page, we basically have a check to say, if you're authenticated, show a get started button, otherwise show a sign in button. So let's just go ahead and click sign in to upgrade. And you can see I'm now signed in. I have my little icon for my profile, my, my Gmail account. But then you'll also notice down here it says upgrade to starters. So going to the pricing component, you'll see I'm doing a query to get the current user information and it's going to return null or undefined if the user is not logged in. I'm not going to talk about how the auth works, but you know, you can abstract this in your mind, basically have a flag or a boolean or some a valid state to know if a user is logged in or not. And so if you are signed in, I show an upgrade button. Otherwise, I show a sign in to upgrade button. Pretty straightforward. Let's look at this upgrade button and kind of pick this apart because this is where the Stripe stuff actually starts to uh, come into play. So when I click on upgrade to starter, that's going to redirect me to a Stripe page, which you can then enter in your credit card information and then you can click subscribe, which leads us to this upgrade button. How does this actually work when you click the button? Well, it's going to invoke a checkout method which is going to call some backend logic. And the backend logic, you could ignore most of this. The most important part is on the Stripe SDK, we are creating a checkout.sessions.create. And then this is where you can put the price ID. So like when you're using Stripe, typically you have to make a product. And I think it would make sense if I show you that. So let's go to my products over here. I have a Stripe account, and I think I can go to my products catalog. And this is where you go when you make a product. You make it a recurring monthly type of subscription product. I have one for starter and I have one for pro. And then when you click it, you should be able to see a bunch of different pricing. So if like you have discount codes or whatever, you can change the pricing of this plan. Um, but I usually just have like one pricing for the plan. Let's click on the price here. And then we will see at the top right, there is a price ID, which you will use to add to your application. So the price ID is what you use in Stripe which is going to come in here and you can kind of create a checkout session using the price ID so that when the user actually tries to enter their credit card, Stripe knows what they're trying to purchase. And you can have like multiple different types of things. Like I could put a comma here and add multiple different products or like increase the quantity to 10 or something. The second important thing to put here is the customer email. So if you do require them to be authenticated in your system, typically you want to get an email that you can have this predefined. And what this is going to do is so when they go to the Stripe checkout, you'll see that email is basically hard coded and they can't edit it. You kind of want the email of who they're logged in as to match the email that they're using in Stripe. Because I mean, later on, if they ask for a refund, it makes it very difficult to see that they're emailing you from some random email, but then when they're logged into your system, they're using something else. Okay, so I like setting the customer email here. And then that leads us to the third really important part, which is the metadata. I like attaching the user ID of the user so that later on when I get a Stripe webhook event, that will be on the event. And I know in my system, like what user was trying to purchase that. And then I can like update that in my database. And then finally you have a mode of subscription. You can put like a success URL. This is like where to redirect the user to if they successfully purchased the product. And then also a cancel URL. So if you want to show them like a nice screen, if they were to cancel and say, hey, uh, you know, sign up for my newsletter in case you change your mind in the future. Anyway, so when you create this session, that gets sent back to your front end. And in the front end, you can use that to basically redirect the user to Stripe. So I have a load Stripe method that's just coming directly from Stripe slash Stripe JS. Like this is the client side Stripe SDK you can use. And you have to provide it your publishable key. So like when you set up your Stripe account, they'll give you a public key and a private key. The private key again is what you're going to be using on the back end. And the public key is what you use in your front end client. So you make a Stripe instance and then you can call redirect to checkout and you pass it that session ID that you get back from when we call that checkout method. And that is what kicks the user over to this page that we're seeing here. So let's just go ahead and fill in the information and then I'll circle back and kind of explain how the web hooks work. So I filled in some information. This is basically what you use if you want to use like a, you know, mock out a subscription purchase. You just do 4242424242 and all this stuff you can just kind of make up, right? So once you've entered in this information, I can click subscribe. And then while that's processing, I want to go back to my terminal down here and I want to show you, we should see a bunch of Stripe events come in when we have successfully subscribed to that product, right? So we have successfully subscribed welcome to the, the site. 
And now if I were to go back to like my subscriptions in my database, notice that we have one. Okay, so now we have an active subscription. It tells us when the user actually like started this subscription, when it was last renewed. I think it also tracks when it's supposed to end. I don't know if I'm tracking that. I probably, oh, this is the ending. Okay, so this is like when it was last renewed and this is when it's supposed to end. And then typically it's like in a month in advance. See, so you have four slash 27 and over here it's five slash 27. And you can kind of do stuff in your application to show that or do different logic based on like if their subscription's about to end, maybe you can warn them or something. Anyway, so now we have a subscription stored in the database. So the way the webhook works is that when you purchase your product, Stripe will eventually send you a bunch of events related to that purchase, right? Um, and I am actually just running this locally. I have this Stripe listen command running, which is going to connect to your Stripe account. And then when any events come in, I can tell it to just forward them to some location. In our case, I'm forwarding them to a remote API which is supposed to process these web hooks as they come in. Now, the reason you want to use web hooks is because you cannot just assume that because a user got navigated back, you know, during their checkout to a slash success page that their credit card was actually processed properly. They, their credit card could be canceled. They could have no money in it. They could be blocked for various reasons. And so you do want to listen to these web hook events to 100% verify that you got your payment into your Stripe account before you just unlock your application for them to start playing with. So let's talk about the API endpoint. I have a slash Stripe endpoint, and this is my webhook URL. So Stripe is going to invoke this, and then it's going to send you a signature. So in the headers, there'll be a Stripe signature, and then you need to take that signature, and you have to basically verify it. Okay, so like looking through this code, we basically get a webhook secret. So when you spin up the Stripe webhook uh, runner locally, or if you're in production, you go to the Stripe dashboard and like you can actually set up a webhook and they'll give you a webhook secret that you're supposed to use. But anyway, on the back end, you use that webhook secret and you have to take in the payload that came over in the post request, the signature that was in the header of that post request, and then also the webhook secret. And you use the Stripe webhooks API to construct an event. This thing will throw an exception if your secret is not defined correctly or if someone's trying to abuse your endpoint. Again, the reason we're doing all this is this is a publicly accessible API endpoint that anyone on the internet could try to send a post request to. So you have to have some security in place to verify that the request being made was from Stripe and not from some third party malicious user. So if this works fine, it'll continue on and you'll have a bunch of events that you could potentially check. So over here we have events.type. If you look through here, we have a bunch of different events. If you go to Stripe, there's like hundreds of these, right? But in terms of setting up subscriptions and how to manage them. What I found the most minimal set of events you need is you need checkout session complete, which is basically like when the per person purchases the subscription for the very first time. Um, I like to check this one. And the reason I do this is because you can get that metadata that was on the checkout session. So you'll see there's a checkout event here and it has a metadata.user ID. So I have access to the user ID of the person who made the purchase. I know that the purchase was successful. And then I'm also grabbing the subscription from Stripe. So once they've checked out, you have like a subscription ID that's on that event. Um, but I do think you do have to like make a request to Stripe to get the full subscription. I need to double check, maybe the subscription's on the checkout event. Like this thing has a bunch of things on it. Um, so it may already have the checkout event on it. And uh, you could probably just get it directly from the event versus having to do an API request to Stripe to get the event. Anyway, after you have the subscription and the user ID, that's where I go and I create that subscription record in my own database. So I track that user ID, I track the subscription ID, and then I also track like what tier they are upgraded to. So I have this method here that takes in the price ID and I just do a lookup. If it's a starter price ID, I return a starter string. Otherwise I return a pro string. And this is what I use to know in the system, like what their limits should be. So everywhere in my application, I have certain limits. So if you're like in the pro plan, you can do more things. Like you can have uh, more chat messages with the AI bot. I didn't really talk about the application I'm building, but just know that there's certain things I do differently based on the pricing tier of the user. So this is kind of where I set that. Anyway, the second event I check is customer subscription updated. So this is where basically if someone were to upgrade their subscription from basic to pro, we'll get an event that comes in. And again, we can update in our own database, like what their new tier is. This will also be invoked when your user's credit card gets charged again in the future and they get like a new current period end and a new uh, last renewal date. I guess it's called current period end and current period start. So this will get invoked 
like every month when a user subscription gets renewed. But the thing that I found that is worth doing is you just need to check the subscription status. So like this could be a bunch of different things. This could be incomplete, uh, trialing, active, past due, canceled, unpaid, pause. There's a lot of things that can happen with the subscription status. And so all I do is I check if you're active or trialing. In my system, I treat that as active. So like you can still use the, uh, the application if your status is one of these two. Otherwise, I just set you to an inactive. Something went wrong, someone canceled their subscription, someone's credit card payment failed, and I just turn them off, right? They cannot use the application unless this thing is set to active. And then everywhere in my code base, I basically have some checks to make sure that, hey, before they're allowed to do this logic, verify that they are actually active. So like every time they try to do like a chat message, I, I check their um, subscription activity. I also check the tier, and then I use that to determine like how many more messages they should be able to chat with with the chat bot in that month. Now, like I said, there's a ton of different events. Like you could probably listen to customer subscription canceled. You can listen to customer subscription created. But I have found just listening to these two events, I think will cover most of your bases. I think another one people recommend listening to is invoice payment successful. But again, like if the payment was successful, this thing will get fired off, I believe. And then you can basically just keep on updating the status or the state of your subscription for that user in your own database based on this event. In Stripe, there's something called a customer portal. So if I go over here and type in like customer portal, let's go here, you can actually enable a customer portal link. And so as a user, you can take this link and then if I go to like my settings page, there's a manage subscription button. If I click it, it just opens up a new tab to that portal. And then I can log into my portal using my email. I think it's gonna send me a code. I'll have to like verify that. Okay, I clicked my email. Now I'm opening up my Stripe portal. So here's where a user can kind of like come in here and like cancel their subscription or they can update their subscription. And the important thing I wanna talk about is the update subscription. This is where they can come in here and they can upgrade from the starter plan to something like the pro plan. So if I select on this and click continue, this is where it's going to send off a bunch of a different events. So like, uh, let me just go ahead and like put this down a little bit of space between this. And then I'm going to say confirm and you will see that it's going to send me a bunch of different Stripe events when the user has updated their subscription. So we got a charge succeeded event. We got a customer subscription updated event. That's the one I was kind of talking about. So that'll update my user's tier from starter to pro. If I go over here, you should see that it says pro now. So we are now a pro user. Um, it also send different things like payment intents succeeded, created, invoice created, finalized paid, whatever. So like you can listen for all these events and you can do various things in your own system based on these. But what I have found the most important ones are customer subscription updated. This is like the key one that you probably need to listen to. You know, now that I'm looking at all these events that came over, I'm not seeing one for checkout succeeded, uh, which is the one I'm kind of listening to right here. So checkout session completed. Maybe this only ever happens during the checkout session phase. And I think I was confused with the invoice payment succeeded that comes later on, which makes me realize that maybe this try catch actually is kind of irrelevant. Like I think this will still work even without it. And so I guess I kind of want to try that out over here. I'm going to go ahead and just try it one more time. You can go and like down, get downgrade this again. So I'm going to go and just say, select the old plan. I'll click continue. I'll click confirm. Everything should work fine. Hopefully, as long as there's no like 400 errors, I think we should be good. And I can go back to my subscriptions in my database. It's now starter. We didn't get any exceptions or anything. So I think we should be good. But I will say that like dealing with Stripe events is it's just kind of confusing because there's just so many different events. You're not really sure what which ones you should be listening to. And some of the things you need to remember is that Stripe events can come out of order. You can have this one happen first and then you'll have this one get ran. And so you need to make sure that your code is set up in a way that if the events come out of order, you can still handle that. Luckily, Stripe will retry failed webhook events. So like if it come out of order and for some reason like that breaks in your system, it will retry them, which might give your system a chance to like rectify the situation and create the right data. But I would just say, keep in mind that like the events can come out of order and you need to make sure your code is written in a way that will not fail if this one were to run first before this one ever runs. And now that I say that out loud, I need to double check my code because I might be missing that. Let me also try canceling my subscription to make sure this works. I'm gonna cancel it just to make sure what I said about the update event, uh, I no longer need it, let's just do this. So this is planned to cancel May 28th. And so I didn't actually get 
a event that's going to change my status. When May 28th comes in, that's when it's going to cancel the actual subscription. So we learned a little bit about the Stripe customer portal. Very good because you want to allow users to upgrade and downgrade their plans. We learned about the products and the price IDs and how you can kind of set up monthly subscriptions using those. We talked about the Stripe checkout sessions, um, which you'll probably need in order for users to sign up for a new subscription. And then we talked a little bit about the webhook events and verifying that the event that came in is from Stripe, because only Stripe knows about the secret. And so you can kind of verify that and then checking these two types of events. Leave a comment if there's a, a type of event you think I just need to add in. I know Theo made a video about this and he has like a, a read me about this, but he seems like he listens to like every single event when from my understanding, like I chatted with GPT for quite a while about trying to understand the best way to do this. And it seems like this customer subscription updated event is going to get invoked in many scenarios. So I think I should have my bases all covered here, but who knows? I, I probably have something messed up. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this overview. Have a good day and happy coding.